There you are. It's uh, Solarosa featuring Spiky T. That is called A Love Alone here on Kiwi. Uh, time now is uh, 12 minutes past nine, and I think it's time that we did this. The Ge- Geek Show. He's joining us from The Geek Show, 23rdrelevant2es.com. It is Kelvin joining us today. Kelvin, good morning. Good morning. Or at Kelvin on Twitter, C H E L. F-Y-N. Indeed, just to confuse people. That's right. <laughs> uh, now, today we're talking about a bit of an extension of what we were talking about with Misbehaviour last week, where we were talking about people making stuff with technology and also traditional crafts. Yeah. But this takes it to the extreme, this time. Robots that kind of make stuff. Well, yeah. Uh, sort of um, the 3D printers. Yeah. Um, and an extension of, uh, and some very cool things that are happening in that area. So um, probably the best place to, to start talking about this is um, maybe rep wraps. Have I talked to you about rep wraps? Rep wraps. Yeah. No, no. I, I think I think I've heard the term, but you're gonna have to refresh my memory on that. Right. Um, the rep wrap project started in Bristol, uh, I think Bristol University, and the idea is to make a 3D printer that can make all of the parts required mm. to make itself. Right. 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 So this is at the moment. I think it can make something like um, seventy or eighty percent of the parts, but there's a few things it needs, like circuitry and motors and things like that. So it but can almost replicate itself. Almost all the parts that aren't basic screws, bits of metal or circuitry, it can make all yeah. the the gears, the the put the things that hold things in place, everything else it makes itself. Okay. Which is rather cool. Yeah. Now, there's a variant on this uh, at makerbot.com, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm there now, makerbot.com. Yeah. Robots that make things. Yeah. Now, they make things by moving a print head backwards and forwards um, that extrudes plastic. And then when it's extruded one layer, the whole bed moves down a tiny amount, and then it prints another layer okay. in plastic extruded and it will make parts. So it's kind of like a laser printer but using plastic to build it up. A bit more like a bubble jet. A bubble jet, right. Yeah. Okay. In fact, the more expensive 3D printers out there, the commercial things rather than the homemade things, yeah. they work with something very similar to an inkjet head. Um, some of them can print in colour working this way and there's other projects that are looking at printing in multiple materials. Mm-hmm. In fact, there's already one that prints in hard and soft plastic. I've seen a, a, a a bike model, just like, you know, desktop size, about four inches long, yeah. of a push bike, including gears and chain and soft tires on hard rims, wow. and the whole thing was printed in one go. No <laughs> a, assembly required. A printed bike. Yeah. <laughs> it's extraordinary. Admittedly very small, yeah, but, yeah. you know, make the machine bigger, Yeah. and uh, this is amazing. So the MakerBot printer works primarily in extruded plastic, although they've got a version which is called Cupcake CNC, mm-hmm. which is com- uh, basically a computer-controlled lathe uh, router so that you can, um, instead of a printing head, it's got uh, a router so that you can cut shapes out of wood mm, okay. uh, under computer control. But they're very similar. They use a couple of stepper motors to re- move a, a head in an X and Y axis, and then they'll, when they're finished, sort of, with an X and Y axis, they'll move the platform up and down for the Z right. and the depth. And there's nothing really new in all this. The, you know, the maker bots are quite cheap. You can um, print them out. You know, you can get the parts and build them yourself. They're very simple. But they've got this fantastic thing going on with their business model. This is what I'm most excited about. Um, the the maker bots the at the moment, are made of about 60% of things that they themselves can make. Okay? Okay. And some of the things that are holding them back from putting maker bots out there are key components that they themselves can make. So, when you buy a maker bot, maker bot themselves will promise to buy back a, a set list of parts that they require to make more maker bots. So you can sell back to them um, particular things that they're short of, you know, particular pulleys, particular gear levers, 
So what they're doing is they're replacing the mass production of a large factory yeah. to their customers and giving their customers an easy income stream when they first get their machine of making parts that they can sell back to MakerBot. It's kind of like, it's almost like carbon trading, but not quite. Almost. Mm. But it's actually something tangible. Yeah. Whereas carbon trading isn't. That's right, yeah. Uh, carbon trading seems to me to be just basically um, some form of replace, almost like a replacement of currency yeah. to attempt to do a better version of resource management. Yeah, yeah. Whereas this is just plain trading, pure and simple. So so you buy a MakerBot. Yep. Um, and um, and then the MakerBot factory says, "Oh, do you mind selling us back some some um, some parts if you if you can make them for us?" Yeah, that's, that's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> and it means that the people making MakerBots don't have to get money in advance to invest in huge factories to make these things. Yeah, they can grow more organically, and you know, get their the people that they're selling to 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 help out. So, do you know if there's one in New Zealand at the moment? Uh, MakerBots, I'm not sure. I do know there's a rep wrap um, just, o- just over the hill from me. Um, a guy called Vic Oliver yeah. has got one of. The, he's heavily involved in the rep wrap project, and he's got one of the first rep wraps in the country. Have you seen it in action? Um, no, I've seen it static. <laughs> when love- it was in action, I was somewhere else at food camp. And <laughs> I missed it. I'd love to see one in action. This would, um, we could probably amazing. hook that up, actually, yeah. because we know Vic, and he's, a, he's a, a, a very nice guy. Although I'm sure there's, there's probably some YouTube clips of oh, these in action. Oh, there's plenty of yeah. clips of YouTube. If you search for RepRap or have a look at makerbot.org, you'll find a chance to see these things in action. Um, one of the nice things is uh, Pinoco, who Helen probably mentioned last week, mm-hmm. um, Pinoco have got... The, all the parts you need, uh, or all the parts other than the, the motors, <laughs> to make um, a rep wrap available to buy. And the great thing is, because all of these designs are open source, yeah. and because the people in Pinoco are really keen for people to get going with things like rep wraps, um, there's no markup on the kit. It's, it's just cost price. Whatever the materials cost, um, that's what it costs on Pinoco. Because they just they they're, they're keen to get this yeah. out there, right? For, uh, yeah. um, you know, I know for a fact that they're putting it out as low as they possibly can. Yeah. And for that, what you get is um, a, a bootstrap rep wrap type thing. The, these are there's a couple of designs out for the rep wrap. One is made from bits which uh, are made that a rep wrap can make. Right. I. Um, uh, they're extruded lumps of plastic. There's another design which looks a lot more like a maker bot, mm-hmm. and it's known as a rep strap, <laughs> like a bootstrap this, rep wrap. This could get confusing. Doesn't it? Yeah. But that looks a bit more like ORAC from Blake 7. Oh, yes. Uh, because instead of being held together with extruded pieces, it's held together with things that can be laser cut out of a sheet of plastic, uh-huh. which is what Pinoco offers as a service. Uh-huh. So, uh, very like the MakerBot, um, it's not specifically designed to be made out of um, things that it can make, but it's, de- it's designed to be made by the emerging technologies that we can lay our hands on quite quickly. So, do you see a time when this technology will be all pervasive? Yes, mm. I do. Mm. Uh, let's, let's put it this way. Um, back, in the, back in the day... About 15, 20 years ago, I mean, I remember 20 years ago, we got a color printer in, in my office. Yeah. And that color printer was jaw-dropping because it only cost 18,000 (laughs) pounds. And that was cheap at the time. Yeah. And it printed in over 4,000 colors, which was a lot at the time. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it only cost a pound 50 a print, (laughs) which was cheap at the time <laughs> and that was only you know 15 20 years ago and that was a technology where printing presses took up buildings yeah and the idea of a home printer was only just getting going in black and white with the, the laser jets and it still cost the outlay of a successful business to buy a color printer 
So it just shows you how advanced these things can actually so get. So that was 20 years ago. Yeah. At the rate at which we've been uh, progressing in the past 20 years. Yeah. Now, because we're accelerating, we'll get that level of progression in the next 10. Wow. Amazing. So at the moment, we're at that very early stage. But there's a machine coming on the market this year that's $5,000 and prints more like an inkjet, but it prints in a single plastic. Which is com um, comparatively cheap, really. And it sits on a desk. Amazing. Well, if people want to go see the future, makerbot.com. No, uh, uh, yes, dot, dot com. <laughs> and, uh, and, of course, uh, the geek show, uh, dot com two threes rather than two E's. Calvin, thanks yeah. so much. Uh, good. Glad you enjoyed that. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. I love staring into the future or even staring into the now. It's always... A, yeah, I really know. Good. It's funny, isn't it, how the now seems like the future. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Calvin. Cheers. Uh,